So first of all, a warm welcome to all participants in this national workshop on PRI CBO convergence, which is being organized by the Ministry of Rural Development in collaboration with Kudum Shri, Government of Kerala. A warm welcome to Shri SM Vijayanand, who, as was mentioned earlier, is an institution in himself who brings to the discussions a large repository, a wealth of knowledge, a wealth of experience, and a vision. So I'm sure that his uh, guidance will be extremely useful to all participants. On the issue of PRI CBO, CBO convergence, the foundation that was laid, say, about a decade back, and which has gained momentum in the last seven, eight years, and as was rightly mentioned, Sri Vijayanand, as Secretary Panchayati Raj, Government of India, was a key player in that. We believe that now the time has come when this convergence needs to be institutionalized, sort of accepted wholeheartedly in all parts of the country and taken to the next level. Over the last few years, Gram Panchayat Development Plan, GPDP, has now sort of entered the lexicon. People across ministries, across departments, they are now recognizing and seeing the value in Gram Panchayat Development Plan. Likewise, the People's Plan campaign, the vibrant Gram Sabha campaign, all these are now sort of catching the interest of other stakeholders. All of us know that the Panchayati Raj institutions are the third tier of government and a constitutionally mandated one at that. It's been over 30 years since the 73rd Amendment. And now we can say that the PRIs are, are at the takeoff stage. In several states, 21 states to be precise, you have more than 50% reservation for women. And the number of women elected representatives now exceeds 46%. It is extremely heartening to learn that several women leaders have risen from the ranks of self-help groups, particularly Kudum Shri, and are, not, and are now occupying positions as elected representatives in panchayats at all three levels, and some are even now getting elected to the legislative assemblies. That is perhaps a fitting response to the PRI CBO convergence, the process that was set in motion over the last 15, 20 years, and in which Kerala has played a pioneering role. In recent times, both Ministry of Rural Development and Ministry of Panchakayati Raj, we have been actively promoting this convergence. The role of self-help groups, their federations, in the preparation of GPDP and now Block Panchayat Development Plan and District Panchayat Development Plan is well recognized. Inclusion of VPRP, that is Village Poverty Reduction Plan, 
as part of GPDP has been made mandatory. But it is still a work in progress. There's a lot that needs to be done to improve the quality of GPDP and likewise the village poverty reduction plan so that these do not re remain mere wish lists but reflect a broader vision to transform the panchayats, to transform the community. And it is in this context that the localization of sustainable development goals under which the SDGs were distributed among nine themes with theme one, poverty free and enhanced livelihood panchayat being one which is directly related with the SHGs, with the CBOs. But in fact, if you will look at it, the SHGs, the CBOs, they have a role to play in attainment of almost all nine LSDGs. I would also like to compliment the Kudumshri team, which at the very outset, through a very effective song, dance, drama presentation, presented before us the journey of Kudumshri. And it clearly showed that they were now active in almost all the nine themes that are now part of LSDGs, whether it is the theme of clean and green panchayat, panchayat with socially just and socially secured panchayat, Panchayat with engendered development, child-friendly panchayat, panchayat with good governance. In all these themes, the SHGs, the Kudumshri, as it is functioning in Kerala, has shown that it has a vital role to play. I am happy to note that Kudumshri is actively engaging with the NRLMs in all these 16, 17 states which are participating today and is playing a key role. There's a lot that has to be learned or that can be learned from the Kudumshri experience, from the Kerala experience. I'm also happy to note that the delegates will be visiting panchayats in the afternoon and seeing for themselves as to how this, this convergence is coming out. At this stage, I would also like to indicate that recently Ministry of Panchayati Raj has launched the Panchayat Development Index, wherein 144 targets, 577 indicators, and 688 data points have been enumerated. And all these targets and indicators are related to the nine LSDGs. And on these, the performance of each panchayat would be evaluated. In this exercise, we have received tremendous support from different ministries and governments, departments at the national level. And I am happy to note that all state governments, they have come forward enthusiastically and accepted this Panchayat Development Index, which is now in the process of being rolled out. 
It is also heartening to note, and you would be happy to note, that on 134 indicators, we are getting data directly from different portals of Ministry of Rural Development through API. So the information or the data that is being furnished from the field to the national portal will need not, uh, need not be again filled up for working out the Panchayat Development Index. That we have ensured we will receive the data from through API from the portal of Ministry of Rural Development. So likewise, for 227 indicators out of 577, we will be receiving data through API from portals of different flagship schemes of different ministries and departments in Government of India. We intend to soon bring out the baseline report, which would reflect the position as on 31st March 2023. That will show us as to where we stand in respect of each of these nine themes and what the panchayats need to do to improve their position on the Panchayat Development Index. I'm sure the SAGs, the CBOs, their close functioning with the panchayats, whether in the meetings of Gram Sabha or in the meetings of the standing committees of panchayats, will play a very significant role in ensuring that their panchayats score or performance on each one of these LSDGs improve or show improvement over the next few years. We believe the Panchayat Development Index will spur the panchayats into action and with the help and support of all community-based organizations and in particular, in particular, the SSGs, they would be able to move very quickly towards realization of the LSDGs. I also believe that the partnership between panchayats and the SSGs, it needs to be formalized. In some states, panchayats have engaged SSGs as service providers, especially in uh, the field of solid and liquid waste management. In certain other states, they are being engaged in several other activities. And in Kerala, they are in being engaged for running a whole uh, sort of plethora of programs in partnership with the panchayats. It is important that the SSGs and the panchayats, they have a clear understanding of their rules and responsibilities. We would be shortly coming up with service level benchmarks for water and sanitation. And where SAGs are engaged as service providers, they would know as to what are the benchmarks that they need to adhere to if their panchayat is to be ranked as the best as far as provision of those services are required. So it is extremely important that the service provider knows what it has to provide what should be the quality of service and they are accordingly paid for that by the panchayat which is responsible for providing those services to the citizens or the residents in the panchayats so this relationship between the shg as a service provider and the panchayat in the times to come, 
it may need to be formalized. They may need to enter into a formal contract, service contracts, so to say. Going forward, it is possible that five years down the line, some panchayats may enter into a partnership with these SSG federations. And there could be a panchayat SSG federation partnership in economic activities. What part form it will take, that is for us to deliberate and discuss upon. But going ahead, that seems to be the logical way forward. The SSGs, in my personal opinion, would also need to take the step next step forward. And at least at the federation level, some of the federation would need to transform them into companies. And the part-time employment of women members should eventually lead to full-time employment of women members. As only then will the participation of female labor force will improve, which at the moment is abysmally low in the country. So I believe that SSGs have a big role to play. They reflect or represent a sizable section of the population, their interests, their demands, which cannot be swept under the carpet for long. They need to be addressed. They need to be articulated. And the local government, through the Panchayati Raj institutions, is an apt institution which could meet these demands which are being articulated through the SSGs and the community-based organizations. So without taking too much time, we look forward to the outcome of this national workshop, wherein, as I understand, the details of the universal rollout in the next three years will be worked out. And in 15 states, as the Joint Secretary mentioned, they will be rolling out in entire blocks. And eventually, in two to three years' time, they would be covering the entire state. And eventually, not only in 15 or 17 states, but throughout the country. It has to be a time-bound program because the extent of and the quality of PRI CBO convergence also varies from state to state. But if we set the vision right, if we have a clear object in mind, then I am sure that is the way forward. And we would be jointly able to realize the goal that we jointly set for ourselves. So strong local government through vibrant Panchayati Raj institutions and a very strong self-help group community-based organization reflected through their federations and the strong partnership between them is extremely important if the country is to become a developed country in the next 20, 25 years. We have achieved a lot in the last 15, 20 years. Number of people, number of persons who have been brought above the poverty line is extremely credit worthy. And the role of SSGs in this entire exercise cannot be sort of uh, minimized. They have played a tremendous role in this. So I believe this is a transformative partnership that is being put in place. Thank you.
Thank you so much, sir, for your valuable insights and kind words. Your words on the role that community institutions can pl play towards localizing sustainable development goals has inspired all of us to keep doing what we have been doing and do it much better and to move towards a formal partnership between community institutions and local governments through which we can deepen democracy and work towards local governance and local development. Thank you so much, sir.